living in Washington, D.C. as long as I can remember. I love this building so much and I love this city so much. I'm so passionate about one day hopefully working in this building. The first thing I ever ran for was to be my class graduation speaker at commencement for high school. And I was lucky enough to be elected. Of course, I wove in a Ronald Reagan quote, as any good blossoming young Republican would. I threw in a JFK quote as well, you know, keeping my parts. I went to high school in New Hampshire. It feels like there's always an election going on. Pretty much every presidential candidate, Republican or Democrat, would go through. It's not just a question of, of having the tools to get change done, but having that spirit to do it. My dad always tells me the story of me seeing the White House on TV and saying, I want to live there one day. And he said, I'd have to marry the president. And I was like, why can't I be the president? So welcome to our mock caucus. This is all about party unity. We're gonna get behind the eventual nominee and we're gonna take back the White House, right? Yeah, yeah. Growing up all through my childhood, I was told that I could never pursue my dreams because of who I was. And one of the biggest reasons I support Pete, it's the fact that somebody can go up and be completely unashamed of who they are. I'm excited to be here today to tell you why I am supporting Joe Biden for the next president of the United States. And I believe that Joe Biden has been able to build the broadest coalition of voters. Even in congressional districts that went to Donald Trump and Republicans in 2016 and 2018, Klobuchar has never lost an election. I trust Elizabeth Warren to address these issues because she has a step-by-step -step plan to address these things because she is, in my opinion, the smartest candidate in the race. Um, and she's a woman, and there's only two women speaking at this caucus. I just want to throw that out there. Bernie Sanders' policies have real-life implications for Americans from every background. Hell, Bernie's been pushing civil rights since he was our age. His consistent record, both in and out of office, speaks for itself. So look at the polls in Iowa. Look how he did in New Hampshire in 2016, because Bernie Sanders isn't just a presidential candidate, he's a movement. Feel the burn. So without further ado, drum roll, please. Or not. Okay. The winner is... Okay. Bernie Sanders has won the GW Mock Caucus. Not be us! Not be us! Not be us! Not be us! Today is Super Tuesday. People in 14 states will vote in Democratic primary. It's a very exciting day. There's definitely a buzz about campus, and we're the college Republicans. It's a little bit of a quieter night for us, but we're having a watch party. Uh, because at the end of the day, we're all political science students. I live for politics, so regardless of the messages and the lessons I can abstract from this, I was going to watch all the results for going to this. This is our Super Bowl. This, yeah, literally. <laughs> I think that there's a lot of people here who agree with the same set of issues, but we just have differing views on how to tackle these issues. Right out of the gate, there were just so many different candidates, and at this point, Democrats are just so desperate to like get Trump out out of office. Did you, did you see Bloomberg is at over 15% in Oklahoma? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Trump is going to win most of these primaries, and that was pretty set in stone. Um, but we wanted to see, you know, who would we be up against? So it was like fun to see, but also just nice to just have that time to just sit with other college Republicans and just talk. Tonight, I tell you with absolute confidence, we're going to win the Democratic nomination. A big night for the former vice president winning 10 states. It's really going to be interesting to see. I have no idea. I think Republicans are like 
on the whole, a little less excited that Biden might be the nominee because they think that the president won't have as good a chance against him. Do we know who the Democratic nominee will be? Not yet, not by a mile. I really do think that this could go all the way to the convention. It will be a two-way race between uh, Biden and Sanders. I will not be running for president in 2020, but I guarantee I will stay in the fight. Obviously gonna be like, everyone's still kind of like processing it, but like, and it's like, even though Elizabeth Warren's out of the race, we know that she's still gonna be fighting for like the things that we believe in. This really threw a wrench in my plans. I was planning on having some sort of internship down in Washington for the summer. But at the moment, you know, I'm just thankful for my family's health and the fact that we can weather this storm. I'll be stuck here in um, the great state of Pennsylvania. So the one benefit of that is that I get to stay in the swing state for the election. So that'll be cool at least. Um, we're actually gonna take our spare bedroom in my house and convert it into like my like office dorm space. It's May 24th and I'm in McAllen, Texas, my hometown. Now I'm the VP of membership for College Dems, which was pretty exciting. We've been doing a lot of talking about what are we gonna do since we're probably gonna stay offline going into the fall. Another part of that is also seeing, looking forward, what College Dems is gonna look like remote. So are we just gonna have a bunch of Zoom meetings? Are we just gonna have a bunch of virtual phone banks? other races, um, sure. like ones in Arizona and North Carolina, which are winnable, like, hands down, and we really need to push them over the finish line. Um, so just back about it when you're doing it, but sure. sounds like you got it done. Yeah. And I, I totally agree with Louis, but like, the McConnell-McGrath race is literally dead tied. It's like 46 46% 46 right now. Also, like, I, I do think it's like a worthy race to dedicate time to. The first presidential debate, in my opinion, was an absolute disaster. Uh, it was very evident what Donald Trump's strategy was going into the debate. It was to be as aggressive as possible. Hello, GW political junkies, and welcome to another episode of Colonial Crossfire. It was it was a load of interruption and nonsense, and I don't think anyone was well served by it. Donald Trump refused to condemn white supremacy on live television. Um, and I think that it's gonna light fires under both bases. Young voters are a crucial part of the electorate and are already making up a large share of early voting across 14 key states compared to 2016. Uh, this is the best form that I have uh, to be able to cast my ballot this year. There you go. It was very exciting to fill in my first like presidential bubble. I'm flying back home. Uh, they never got my request for an absentee ballot, so it looks like the only way to vote now is to actually show up in person on election day. The stakes couldn't be higher. It is election day, the final day of a voting season without precedent in American history. Nearly 100 million people have cast ballots early. Like just being in a swing district is just crazy in general. Knowing that Pennsylvania might be the hinge point for the entire country is really like crucial. It was kind of crazy to actually feel like I participated in this monumental event. So I just voted. When you think about it, it's such a simple thing. Just hitting a couple of buttons on a screen and, you know, you're changing the the fate of the country. It is almost 7 o'clock in the east, 4 o'clock in the west, and polls are about to close in six states, giving us the first results in an election night that may still not be over by the morning or the week. Florida. Blue or red, call it now. I feel like it's even pointless to be watching this right now because, like, it could literally completely change after they count mail-in no, ballots. Absolutely. I'm told by officials they're going to be working through the night trying to quickly tabulate the influx of mail-in ballots. Because of Pennsylvania's election laws, they couldn't be counted until after the close of the election. Um, so it was like all of the 
Republican votes had come out and then the, the Democrat mail-in ballots more likely had to be counted. It is just hit midnight on the East Coast. We're seeing a lot more people coming out to vote. We're seeing a lot more Democrats coming out to vote. And ultimately, Trump's numbers aren't as great as they were in 2016. So I'm hopeful, I'm going to sleep excited, and I'm going to sleep happy. It's clear that this is gonna be a long and protracted uh, battle over the next few days at least. There are millions of ballots of people who cast their votes legally, um, but whose votes haven't been able to be counted yet. The president now says that their votes should not be counted. Um, to be frank, it's wrong. Their votes should count. So uh, we'll see how the next few days go. At this point, most, if not all, news media outlets have called this election for Joe Biden by giving him Pennsylvania with its 20 electoral college votes. I'm disappointed, but I also knew this was coming. We elected at least 13 non-incumbent women, Republicans, to the House. And it really shows that there are women conservatives. We do exist and we do run for government. <laughs> I've dreamed of being here my entire life, but like ever since I got here, it just hasn't felt right. But now that Biden is president, it just all feels different. And the city, there's so much serotonin in this city right now. And it just feels so different and so happy. And like, I'm just so happy to be here. There's a lot of energy out here. Someone gave me this sign. Like there's a sense of a hope. I know Biden isn't the perfect candidate by any means and the progressive values that we care about have a lot of work before they become a reality. But it feels like we're entering a new era. I've never described myself as anti-Trump or never Trump. That's just not who I am. I'm just defined more by you know supporting conservative beliefs and Republican candidates that I agree with. What he was unable to provide for the nation was that more calming rhetoric and trusted leadership um, that a lot of voters probably saw those attributes in Joe Biden. So it's inauguration day. Um, and it's almost strangely quiet. Just today, I'm going to be able to take a breath and just feel lighter because I know that just a couple blocks down the street from me, it's happening. My fellow Americans, we have to be different than this. America has to be better than this. And I believe America is so much better than this. Joe Biden was speaking on the steps of the Capitol building, which had been attacked just two weeks earlier um, by an angry mob, sought to define that day in history as uh, you know, an inflection point for our nation. And his inauguration is a potential turning point as he seeks to unify the country. It's a bold task. It's clear that he recognizes just how critical this moment is. But more than that, he recognizes that it's not just his responsibility, it's all of ours. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. I've rewatched that part of the inauguration because her poem was so powerful. It was a good inauguration and we're on to the next four years. The next chapter of, of my life, or wherever it'll take me, will be uh will be where I need to be like surrounded with like political people. That's also the most like interesting to like have really passionate conversations about and some of the more like great conversations that I've had. So I think I'll, uh, I think I'll, I'll keep making phone calls. I think I'll keep knocking on doors and see, see where that takes me. <laughs> like there was a lot of things we missed out on. So I think going back to campus, I can't wait to actually like see everyone in person again, attend chapter again, attend college Republicans meetings again. I can't wait to have those experiences again. The day after I graduated GW, I started working full time for Jack Cittarelli's campaign for governor here in New Jersey. The reason why I'm involved in politics is to help um, make change at a policy level uh, to help people in my community. I think that's why people should get into politics and government. Uh, I think that that's the real uh, exciting work that motivates me. A lot of crazy things have happened, but overall I think working with students with Warren, 
which is now for Sis GW, Sunrise GW, and GW College of Crowds, and then working for Charles Booker's campaign in Kentucky, working with all those organizations um, throughout the past year and a half, really showed me that the fight is never over in the best way. Always showing up and caring and always wanting to fight is just such an important thing.